the framework is very simple. So it, it consists out of four elements. The first element being, if I start here, the circuitry. So circuitry is the term of this is how the brain is built. This is the dynamics, the internal processes of the brain. That's the neuroscientific part of that model. So this is good to know stuff about how the brain works. Um, the next part is about what is in it. So if you take the brain as the organ, yeah, then there is something going on in it. And this is what is called the inner content. And these are the thoughts, the emotions, the beliefs, the values, and, and whatnot that is stored or that is innate into this organ called brain. And then there is something that we all work on in our work, which is the conscious engagement, meaning that there is that dynamic. This is the way my brain is wired, we, we sometimes say. Um, and this is my fundamental thoughts and beliefs about life. And yet, there is our capability to change. Right? <coughs> As Viktor Frankl said, between stimulus and response, there is our moment where we can do a free choice and, ex um, and use our free will in order to make a conscious decision. And this is about that step. And what, what, what CCL postulates is that we should, we should maybe consider going away from just focusing on competencies only, but rather see the resulting leadership behavior as a function of the circuitry of the brain, the inner content, meaning the beliefs, the values, and everything, and the conscious engagement of the owner of the brain with its content, which then real results into actual leadership behavior. If the brain was so simple that we could understand it, we would not be able to understand it because it would just be too dumb. It's each brain is ever-changing and hence unique, and that has some implications if you think about it. The non-conscious in our brain controls the conscious. How does memory work? There's two fundamental centers or areas in the brain and those two areas are in charge of either well-being or stress. There are six different paradigms or directions or characteristics of leadership behavior that influences it in a way that is either inducing stress or pain or inducing well-being. Okay? <laughs> and when we say Meditation changes the brain. Matter of fact, everything changes the brain in every minute. If you scan it, the way you, you build the research gives you almost already the result, right? Start, if, you, if you want, we start dying from the moment we are born because from that moment on, the brain just reduces the amount of synapses that are available. So there's, in very, very simplistic terms, three ages of the brain that are still with us. One is the, the oldest one is the re reptilian brain, okay? That is for uh, freeze, fight, flight, the very, very basic stuff. And then there is the mammal brain, which is about emotions. And then there is the human brain, which talks about abstract thinking. If you look at energy consumption of the brain, 30% of the energy of the body, 30% of the energy of the body is consumed by the brain. Not by your muscles, by the brain. And what's interesting is that is only reduced by 5% when you are in, um, in, in standby mode. It is just pondering, you know, just sitting Nothing there, <laughs> you know, chilling, as my kids would say. Decision making. When I'm, shopping, when I'm standing in the supermarket and I'm standing in front of, let's say, cereals, okay, and I need to make a purchase decision, the, my emotional center is active way before I use my logical human brain. So there is, we have all these cells in the different parts of our body that gives us, um, you know, like when we feel something, when we touch something, heat, cold, uh, gustatory, um, smelling, all the different impulses. All these, se uh, all these um, senses, they, le they have like a, like a landing page on a, on a website in the brain, okay? So that means that our conclusions, what is reality, 
oh, are, you know, subject for discussion. Uh, it's always worth asking. It's always worth double checking. Is that really the case on that one? So uh, this is a portion that uh, leaders need to learn to listen to intuition and to listen to their body, the somatic markers, and what are they going to tell them. That is just one instrument that they are not using in many cases. Or if they do, not very consciously. Memories, especially their emotional connotation, can be changed. And again, that is not done overnight in one session, maybe sometimes in one session. Uh, but it is also requiring a lot of work and, and some conscious decision. And uh, emotions foster learning. Everybody goes to dinner, but you're not invited. That's the same area, and um, I'm hammering. I, you know, I'm working with the hammer and the nail, and there's my thumb just in between the two. <laughs> same thing. So, and it, what it does do, it is it goes down in the elevator of evolution from the human brain to the mammal brain to the reptile brain, and it goes into fight, flight, fight, or freeze. This is what's what's being done. Yeah? So the elevator of evolution. Right? They would, and then the well being of that individual is so high that they forget everything else. They forget to eat, they forget to drink, they forget to have sex. It's stronger than anything else. So that must be a very, very, very strong source of energy that determines our actions. If you do multitasking all the time, if you bring your iPhone for lunch, um, if you do too many things at the same time over a long period of time, never get into that, then that means that your brain is likely to get out of shape. Depending on what your physical stress level is, it has an impact on how your brain works, how efficient it works. I think what that tells us that we should all take the body more into account in our work listening to it, but also make sure that this is not just a transport means for the brain, it is really a um, something that is interconnected. We should not think of brain and body as two different things. So even, um, even newborns, very, very young kids, yeah. babies, they can judge if something is fair or unfair in a very, very simplistic way, but they have a sense for that, and they start to cry when things don't are not fair in their meaning.